Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me, an open source channel. Right, in this video, um, what I'm going to be showing you is how to connect your Jenkins server to your Kubernetes cluster. So I've done a video a while ago on running Jenkins inside your Kubernetes cluster and also another video recently about uh, CI CD pipeline using Jenkins and completely inside your Kubernetes cluster. But this one is for a viewer. Um, I think her name is Aisha. Hi, Aisha. Uh, she asked me uh, if it's possible to connect existing Jenkins um, installation or instance to an existing Kubernetes cluster instead of running Jenkins inside the same cluster. So that's entirely possible, but the problem she was having is uh, when she's trying to use a separate Jenkins instance to connect to an existing Kubernetes cluster, uh, she can connect, uh, but whenever she creates a job, the slave pod gets uh, triggered or something, but uh, the job is uh, pending, right? The job uh, is stuck waiting for an available executor. Basically, it's having some problem uh, auto spinning up the Jenkins slave agents as pods inside the Kubernetes cluster. So some kind of issue she is experiencing. So um, I wanted to try that out. I tried it in my environment. So I'm going to have a separate Jenkins uh, instance running. And then I also have a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to try and integrate both these together. So I'm going to install a Kubernetes plugin on my Jenkins instance and connect my Jenkins to Kubernetes cluster and run my jobs on the pods in the Kubernetes cluster. So that's what I'm gonna try in this video. I've already tried that and it's working. So this is the demo now and I hope it also works now, okay? So first thing first, let me start a Docker container. So I'm gonna run Jenkins as a Docker container. Docker run, so that's the command. Minus minus name uh, Jenkins, minus D to run it in a detached mode. Minus V for volume. Jenkins underscore home. I'm binding that to var Jenkins underscore home inside the Jenkins container. And I'm exposing port 8080 and port 50,000 to my local workstation. So 50,000, it's the JNLP port. All the slave agents connect to this master Jenkins using 50,000. And the Jenkins web UI, we can access it uh, on 8080. Okay, so I haven't started my Docker service. So sudo systemctl start docker and then now if I run the same command again it should start okay so docker volume ls so we have Jenkins underscore home so that's the volume our container will be using docker peer Jenkins is running uh, port 8080 port 50,000 name is Jenkins okay so let's look at the logs docker logs minus f Jenkins okay so Jenkins is fully up and running and if you look a little about so that's the uh, Jenkins initial admin password so now we can go to our browser and go to localhost colon 8080 so that's our Jenkins and the administrator password is the one that we just copied from the Jenkins logs I'm gonna paste that and I'm gonna hit enter Okay, never, not now. Install suggested plugins. I'm going to go with that one. And on the left here, Jenkins logs, you can see uh, what's going on. So it's at the moment, it's uh, downloading and installing all the uh, plugins, all the suggested plugins. So let's give it a couple more minutes. I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's ready. All right, it's nearly done. We've got a few more plugins to be installed. Subversion, SSH slaves, matrix authorization, that's all done. Email extension on LDAP. Okay, so that's done. So we are going to create our first admin user. Username, let's say Venkat N, password, confirm password, full name, Venkat Nagapan, email address, Venkat N at example.com. It doesn't matter. Okay, and then click save and continue okay so Jenkins URL what I'm going to do for Jenkins URL is instead of localhost I'm going to specify the IP address of my local machine which is 192.168.1.81 
192.168.1.81. So that's the Jenkins URL. All my Jenkins slave pods from the Kubernetes cluster, it's going to access the Jenkins master using this URL. So it's better to set the Jenkins URL appropriately. Okay, save and finish. Start using Jenkins. Okay, so that's Jenkins. And the first thing I'm going to do now is go to manage Jenkins. Ignore all these errors and go to manage plugin. So we are going to install the Kubernetes plugin. Click on available and then search for Kubernetes. So there you go, Kubernetes install without restart. So it's going to install Kubernetes credentials and Kubernetes plugin. Okay, so that's done. And now if I go to Jenkins, manage Jenkins, and then configure system. So now we are going to configure our cloud. Okay, so manage Jenkins, installation successful, Kubernetes, that's good. And in the configure system page, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, let me move that to the other side. Okay, so you can see me as well as my web browser. Okay, so on the configure system, all the way down, you have this cloud, add a new cloud, Kubernetes. Okay, and uh, Kubernetes URL is, okay, so how do you find the Kubernetes URL? If I do kubectl get nodes, so that's my node, that's okay, kubectl config view. It's going to look at the configuration, either you can look at dot cube, config and that's the URL of your Kubernetes. Okay, so I'm running Kubernetes on LXC containers or you can just do kubectl config view and the server address is here. So that's your server address. Copy that and paste it in the Kubernetes URL. Okay, that's done and if I test the connection now, it's going to fail. Okay, SSL handshake exception. Because our Kubernetes URL is HTTPS, we haven't provided any certificate or any kube config file. Yep. Okay, the easiest way is now disable HTTPS certificate check. No, I don't want to do that. Credentials. Add a credential. Jenkins. And then go with a secret file. Choose a file. So this is where you're going to choose your Cube config file. So if I go to home and then under dot cube config. So that's our cube config file. Open ID, let's say my cube config description, my Kubernetes configuration file. Add. Okay, and you're going to select that one, my Kubernetes configuration file. And now if I test connection, connection test successful, that's it. So you're adding your Kubernetes configuration file to this Jenkins instance so that this Jenkins can talk to your Kubernetes cluster using kubeconfig file. The kubeconfig file, if you're using kubeconfig file, you don't actually need this uh, Kubernetes URL. Even if I delete this URL, I think it should work because the cube config file already contains the certificate, the token, who you are connecting as, and what is your Kubernetes uh, server, API server, URL, and so on. So let's try that. Yep, as, as I said, connection test successful. You don't have to specify certificate key or Kubernetes URL or anything. If you just add your cube configuration file as a, a secret file, then good to go. And if you see the help icon here, the URL of the Kubernetes API server, if not set, the connection option will be auto configured from service account or cube config file, which we did. All right. So that's done. And let's proceed to configuring all the rest of the uh, services. Okay. Control C, let me close all these windows so that you can see that a bit better. Okay, so name Kubernetes, Kubernetes URL, don't worry about that. We have added the cube configuration file, Jenkins URL, which is HTTP 
192.168.1.81.8080. Okay? So Jenkins Tunnel is the one where the Jenkins Slave Agent connects to the Jenkins Master, which is on port 50,000. So 192.168.1.81 colon 50,000. 50,000, yeah, that's right. Connection timeout, read timeout, can not see that's all not a problem. Pod label. Okay, let's add a label to the pod. You know, these are the labels that you see uh, in your Kubernetes cluster. If you want to search for all the pods that are uh, that, that are started by the Jenkins instance, you can uh, check that. So key is Jenkins, value is slave, for example. So you can uh, search, for example, uh, kubectl get pods minus l uh, Jenkins equals slaves. That will list all your Jen all your pods, all your Jenkins slave pods. So it's just an easy way to assign uh, key values to your pods or labels to your pods. All right. So you can add as many labels as you want. Pod retention never. So there are a few options here. Always, never, on failure. I don't really mind. It depends on your use case. If you're triggering a job in your Jenkins and that uh, creates a new Jenkins agent pod and then it runs the job inside the pod and do you want to retain that pod after the job completed maybe you want if the job actually failed you might want to log into the uh, container to see why it failed and so on so you might have to uh, say on failure I want to re I want to retain my pod when the job fails or I want to retain my pod always uh, no matter whether the job paused or failed or anything, uh, I just want to keep my part. So in my case, I'm just going to say never. So I don't care whether the job paused or failed. Just delete my container after the job completes. Max connections to the Kubernetes API server. I'm going to leave that as default 32. Seconds to wait for part to be running. By default, it waits for like 10 uh, minutes, right? Yeah. Default provider template images add pod template kubernetes pod template so we are now adding the pod specification kubernetes pod template name i'm going to say cube namespace you don't have to specify any namespace but if you don't specify a namespace i think it will use the default namespace labels cube pods so i'm specifying the labels so these are the label these are separate to the pod label pod label is for kubernetes and pod specification here the label is for the jenkins so if you want to run a specific job uh, you may want to target nodes that have a certain label so that's why uh, i'm assigning a label here usage only build jobs with label expression matching this node okay use this node as much as possible i'm going to select the other option label expression matching this node. So this node will be used only for jobs that specify the label attached to this uh, slave agent, which is QPod. So only if a job specifies that the job wants to run on a node that has a label QPod, this pod will get utilized. Okay, pod template to inherit from container. So now we got to add our container template Container template name, let's say JNLP. Docker image is Jenkins slash uh, JNLP dash slave colon latest. And then working directory home Jenkins. I'm going to leave that to home Jenkins. Command to run. I'm just going to delete that. Arguments to pass to the command. Delete that. Environment variable, that's important. I'm going to add an environment variable. Key Jenkins underscore URL. Value is HTTP 192.168.1.81 colon 8080. I think we are almost done. We don't have to do anything else. Environment variable, volume, concurrency limit, pod retention. Uh, okay, this is another one. Always default never. I'm going to say never. Pod retention is never. Time in minutes to retain agent when idle. Time in seconds for pod deadline. Time in seconds for Jenkins connection. So if you want, you can customize all those, but I'm not going to do anything 
show raw yaml in console i'm going to uncheck that one because uh, whenever you go to a console output of a job uh, it will show you the actual yaml file that it used to create a jenkins uh, slave part which i don't want to see all right so we should be good to go okay so i'm going to open up a terminal and let's see i'm going to open another terminal as well and on the top here, docker logs minus f Jenkins, let's say Jenkins. And in the bottom pane, watch kubectl get pods. Okay. Let's create a new job. Create new job. Enter an item name. Demo job freestyle project. Okay. And uh, restrict where this project can be run. So I want to run this project only on a machine or a node that has the label cube parts. All right, so build step, execute shell, host name, just a simple um, shell build step, save Jenkins, and let's trigger it. Okay. And on the right here, let's see what happens. We are looking at the Jenkins logs here. Yep, as you can see now, Jenkins has triggered a pod. And on the bottom pane here, you will see a new container, new Jenkins slave pod getting created. Yep, container is creating. So cube dash, and it's offline at the moment. So we're going to wait for the container to uh, get created and then it will run the job on the container and then this uh, slave pod will get deleted afterwards all right um, it is running waiting for agent to connect running and the job is running now disconnected computer and the pod is gone right so we've triggered the job the job triggered a new Jenkins slave agent as a pod inside our Kubernetes cluster. It ran the job inside the pod and then the job completed and uh, the pod has been deleted. So that's cool, right? Um, Jenkins, let's look at the job and let's look at the console output of the job. Okay, so host name is cube-n5ckj. That's cool. So let's trigger this job again and see what happens now. Uh, trigger this job, build scheduled, and now it's going to spin up a new Jenkins uh, pod inside our Kubernetes cluster, and it's going to run. Based on where it decides to create the pod, it might take a while, because if it has chosen a different worker node, again, it's going to pull the uh, Jenkins JNLP slave uh, thing. Okay, cool, running, waiting for agent to connect and it's going to disconnect it and it's gone that's it and if i click on the demo project so we have two runs and if i look the console output of the second run host name so that's the different container and the container is gone cool um i think that's all i wanted to show you hi isha i think uh I hope it might have helped you a little bit and if it not uh, let's continue uh in the comment section so if it doesn't work, please give this a try. And if it doesn't work for you, uh, let's investigate further. Hope it helped you. All right. For anybody else who is watching this video, please give this a try. And if you've got any questions or any feedback, please leave me a comment. Um, I should be get I should be able to get back to you at the earliest. I will see you all in my next video. But don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Right. All right. I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.